welcome my dear friends cp get 2023 free online close free online class for all competitive exams pg entrance cu set and jldl other competitive examinations also this coaching is very useful this regard today's our eminent resource person dr a kavita madam garu assistant professor Department of Botany, RBVRR Women's College Autonomous, Hyderabad. Madam is going to explain about the bryophyta. Next topic after Mark Anshia. Madam is clearly explaining about uh, the bryophyta and pteridophyta. Madam, please uh, welcome and share yes. your screen and start your session. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, I'm audible? Yeah, you are audible, madam. Yeah. Uh, good morning to the participants. Uh, today we are going to start with the another type study of Mark and uh, Bryophyta that is Anthocyros. Just I'm start sharing my screen. I hope the screen is visible. Yes, yes, madam, it is visible. Yeah, uh, so we'll start with that. Uh, so this is the second type study uh, which is available in our syllabus that is Anthocyros. Now, unlike uh, the Mark and Shia, what we studied in the previous class, uh, those were called as the liver warts. And to, uh, Mark and Shia, they are commonly called as the liver warts of the bryophyta division. Whereas these anthocyros, they are commonly referred to as horn warts. Horn, H-O-R-N, horn warts. The common name for anthocyros, it is horn warts. Whereas common name for Marcantia, they were called as the liver warts. So that is the reason why they were included under the, oh, what we called as the class Hepaticopsida. And the Xanthoceros, the common name for the city is horn warts because of the sporophyte. The sporophyte will be emerging out of the gametophyte. The shape of the sporophyte appears just like the horn of the animals. So hence we call it as commonly it was named as horn warts. Now we'll look into the classification of the xanthoceros. Uh, the xanthoceros, it belongs to the uh, bryophyta class anthocerotopsita, order anthocerotes, family anthocerotaceae and the anthoceros. And uh, when we talk about the classification of these anthocyros, it uh, anthocyros is the only genera belonging to the class Anthocerotopsida. It is one and only genera. This is also another important point to be noted. There are no other genera included under this division Anthocerotopsida. Okay. Now, next we are moving on to the uh, the. Habitat, the occurrence where this anthocyros are growing. So unlike the Marcantia, even anthocyros, it is also a terrestrial uh, genera, terrestrial bryophyte, which is growing on the moist soil, the soil which is moist and are present in the shady places and also in the surfaces of the rocks or in the mountains. Now, so uh, the important species which are commonly found in Indian origin of Anthocyros, it includes Anthocyros erectus, Anthocyros himalayensis, Anthocyros cambensis, etc. They were commonly found in our Indian origin in the western Himalayas region. Now, so when we talk about the general structure of the, uh, the vegetative structure of the Anthocyros, even anthocyros here, this is also a thyroid plant body, just like Marcantia. It appears just like Marcantia, thallus plant body. And it is also a lobed thallus and irregular or dichotomously branched. And how you are going to identify the anthocyros genera? So you can look into this here. This is the anthocyros uh, thallus. Uh, the margin of the thallus you can observe, it is the wavy margin. Okay. So, by the appearance of this wavy margin of the anthocyros, we can 
uh, identify it as the anthocyros and also it appears just like a small rosette like plant rosette in this sense it appears just like a rose like flower the all the lobes are the anthocyros lobes are arranged one above the other forming a rosette so hence by the wavy nature of the margin and the rosette like uh, arrangement of the lobes this anthocyros can be identified very easily and it is also attached form. It is going to attach to the substratum uh, with the help of unicellular rhizoids. I repeat, this is also an attached form. And here we find only a one type of rhizoids, what we call them as unicellular rhizoids. Now, and on the ventral side of the thallus, you can see the presence of the mucilaginous cavities. Now, uh, so, uh, the most important characteristic feature of uh, the anthocyros is the cavities, what I told you just now, the mucilaginous cavities, the mucilaginous cavities in on the ventral side of the thallus, in the internally, that is anatomically, when we observe, these mucilaginous cavities, they show the presence of, or they, uh, they will give the shelter to the blue green algal member called as nostoc i repeat the mucilaginous cavities on the ventral side of the anthocyros thallus it is going to consist of the blue green algal member the colonies of blue green algal member called as nostoc so this anthocyros it will exhibit a symbiotic association between algae and the bryophyte, the anthocyros. Now, next, we can also find stomata like small air pores or we call them as small slits, which are present on the dorsal side of the thallus and the mucilage is going to oozing out through that uh, pores or through that slits, making the plant always moist in condition and fleshy in origin. Now, when we move on to the internal structure here, so just I'll show you here the internal structure. This is also a dorsi ventral thallus, unlike uh, Mark and Shear. We can see here the upper epidermal region and the lower epidermal region. And it been, and between these two regions, there is a parenchymatous tissue, where in this parenchymatous tissue, you can see these are the uh, mucilaginous cavities present in the ventral side of the anthocyros thallus and you can observe here this is a mucilaginous cavities which is enclosing the nostoc colonies these are the nostoc colonies okay so this plays a very important role here in maintaining the symbiotic association so uh, you can see here the thallus has uniform parenchymatous cells Epidermis is present on both the sides. Uh, the cells of the upper region, they contain chloroplast for photosynthesis. And uh, the thallus, what we observe here, it is thickest in the middle region and it gradually becomes thinner towards the margin. And the cells of the lower epidermal region, they are giving rise to smooth unicellular rhizoid. Only one type of rhizoids, they are smooth type and the two of unicellular uh, rhizoids are observed at the lower epidermal region. This is about the anatomy of the anthocyros thallus. Now, so when we observe here how the growth of this thallus is appeared is it is occurring through the a single apical cell and uh, the mature plants they will be scattered by these uh, they have the scattered apical cells on their margin and uh, they are considered as the marginal cells of the thallus they are considered to be as the growth points that means to say the margins that is the when the margin of the thallus it gets uh, detached from the main plant it is having the capacity to develop into a new thallus which we call it as vegetative propagation or vegetative reproduction and I told you that the thallus, the lobes, the anthocyros thallus are arranged in several rings forming a rosette. 
that is also carried out with the help of these points. Now, next we are moving on to the reproduction. So, the reproduction, the vegetative reproduction is carrying it out with the help of death and decay of the thallus. That is one thing. And another one is through the tubers and also some uh, gemme like structures. Here also we are calling them as gemme. And look into here. Persistent growing apices. I told you that the margins of this anthocyros thallus, we are considering them as a growing uh, points because the margins are always persistent. That is, they will be in the live condition. They will be growing. Their cells are always dividing and developing into the new thallus. Now, this is regarding the death and decay of the thallus. When the thallus is uh, undergoing decay or defecation, then uh, the marginal points, the marginal apices of the thallus will develop into a new thallus. So, here we can see uh, these are commonly just in starting class and I told you that they are called as liver. Uh, uh, so, this is uh, liver watch mark and share. It is very uncommon method in this, uh, this one. So, these are the tubers, okay. So, the margins of these anthocyros lobes, they are going to develop and uh, external outgrowths. These tubers are considered to be as the external outgrowths. Now, these outgrowths here, they are going to store the food material inside and when these uh, uh, tubers, when they detach from the main thallus, they develop into a new plant. And you can observe here, the, the tubers are getting surrounded by a protective corky layer, which are resistant to the extreme conditions. They help in protecting the tuber from not to get uh, damaged. Okay, so that is the outermost very tough layer of the tuber and it is resistant to the extreme conditions. Now here, this is uh, the gimmick on the dorsal side of the thallus here. Even gamma cup is developed, which are enclosing the gamma on which uh, on separation they are developing into a new plant. And the species like uh, Anthocyros glandulosus, Anthocyros formace, and Anthocyros fusiformis. These are the geni uh, These are the species of Anthocyros which are going to develop these stalked structures called as gamma on the dorsal surface. The species called as Anthocyros pearsoni and Anthocyros fusiformis. These are the two species which are employing the vegetative reproduction through the persistent growing apices. Okay, so this is regarding the vegetative reproduction of the Anthocyros. Now we are moving on to the uh, sexual reproduction. So you can see here a very beautiful uh, image of the Anthocyros thallus. So, you can look the base of the here, the substratum of the rock. This is completely of anthocyros. And uh, you can see these are the like, uh, uh, what we call it as uh, the structures which are coming out, some brownish color structures which are emerging out of this thallus here. You can see these are the small ones. This is the sporophyte, a very long sporophyte, which is a very characteristic feature of this anthocyros. Whereas in uh, Markansia, we have seen the sporophyte was embedded in the gametophyte. It was not emerging out. In Markansia, the sporophyte was developed within the gametophytic tissue. It is not coming out. Whereas here, this is evolutionary uh, trend of the bryophyte. Sporophyte is emerging out, a long branched sporophyte. So, due to this appearance here, due, as, this, uh, as this sporophyte is appearing like a horn of the animals, so it is commonly, the anthocyros is commonly represented as horn worms. Now, so this we have already discussed, the vegetative reproduction taking place by older parts, the tubers, gemme and all that. Now, now we are moving on to the sexual reproduction. Here also the sexual reproduction is of oogamous type. That is, they are going to develop the, uh, the sexual organs called as antheridia and the archegonia. 
So hence the sexual reproduction is represented as oogamous type of sexual reproduction. Now, in the Anthoceros, some species were representing as monoecious and some species were represented as dioecious. So now what is this condition? In monoecious condition, both the antheridia and the archegonia, they are going to develop within the same thallus. That is the two sexual organs, they develop within the same thallus. Whereas in dioecious, unlike Marcantia, the both are sub, uh, separately developed on two different plants. Antheridia will develop on the male plant, archegonia will develop on the female plant. But, but most commonly, majority of the anthocyros, they are monoecious in condition. Now, so as in the monoecious species, when I talk about antheridia are the sexual organs which are to be developed first. That is, they are being developed or produced earlier than that of archegonia. And these sexual organs, they are embedded in the, deeply embedded in the thallus. So, this is regarding the antheridia, which are developed within the thallus. So, you can look into this. This is a thallus. Okay, the internal structure of the thallus you can see. Now, so these antheridia, okay. Uh, so, they are also same stalked globose structure, which are covered by the jacket layer. And, and here, these antheridia, they are deeply seated. That is endogenously. They are developing deeply internally into the thallus. They are not exposing out. The antheridia are not exposing out. They are deeply embedded. They are embedded in the tissue of the anthocyros. And that too, these antheridia, they develop on the dorsal side of the, of the thallus. And and another important point to be noted here regarding this antheridia are these antheridia, they are developed in the closed cavity, which is called as antheridial chamber. So, you can see here, this is an antheridial chamber. And in this antheridial chamber, we can see the development of the antheridia. And you can do this, where is this antheridial chamber? It is on the dorsal side. So, this is on this is the dorsal side. This is the ventral side. So, where this antheridial chamber is developed? On the dorsal side of the thallus. And it is deeply seated inside the thallus. Okay. Internally, they are not coming out. They are not emerging out. They are internally. We call them as endogenous development. Internally, endogenously, they are developed in the antheridial cavity. Now, so within this antheridial cavity, uh, depending upon the species, uh, uh, two to four antheridia can be developed in the antheridial chamber. So, generally, uh, majority of the anthocyros species develop two antheridial in them. The number of antheridia will be two in number. Okay. So, it depends on species to species, but two to four are the number of the antheridia present inside this antheridial chamber. And each antheridia they consist of, look, uh, you can look into this, the antheridia, they are uh, the same thing what I just repeated just now. They are developed on the dorsal side and in the small cavities, what we call them as antheridial cavities. And these antheridia, they are found in two to four in number, right? So, majority of the species, they develop only two antheridia, but some, in some we can see even the development of four antheridia also. Now, this antheridial cavity here, it is completely covered. And uh, they have no opening towards the outside. They are deeply seated. And antheridia is going to consist of a multicellular stalk and a globose body. And inside the antheridia, you, you can see the mass of androgonial cells. And these cells, they develop into the male gametes, which are called as biflagellated antherozoids. Now, you can see this, the androgonial cells, they produce a mass of androzide mother cells which will undergo uh, division and develops into anthrozoids. And these anthrozoids, they are also biflagellated and uh, they they have the capacity, they are, they are motile. 
they will be released outside the antheridial chamber by the rupturing of the antheridial wall. So this is how the antheridia are developed. So this is the antheridial chamber and you can see here, these are, this is the development of a pair of two antheridia within the antheridial chamber. So this is a clear picture here you can see. These are the two antheridia and these are the outer uh, the cells of the thallus, the internal cells of the thallus and this is the antheridial chamber or the cavity. And this is the anthrozoid, the male gamete. Okay. And these are, you can see here, these are the two flagella. So, biflagellated anthrozoids. These are the male gametes. So, the anthrozoids are spindle-like. Okay. So, you can look into the, the shape of this is the spindle-like. And they are biciliated. Biciliated or, the, or we call it as the biflagellated. So, having two flagella at the anterior end. And uh, with the help of this, they can swim in the water and reach the may, uh, female reproductive organ called as the archegonia. Now, moving on to the may, uh, female uh, sexual organ, what we call it as archegonia. So, these archegonia, unlike uh, the uh, antheridia, they are also endogenously developed. That is, they are developed inside the tissue of the thallus. Next, each archegonia, the structure of the archegonia is having a globose venter and a long neck. And the venter is enclosing the female gamete called as the egg and a venter canal cell. And uh, the neck is comprising of four neck canal cells. And at the tip of this neck, which, uh, the archegonia is covered by four cover cells also. So this is the Diagrammatic representation, how the archegonia is developed in the tissue. This is a single initial cell. We call it as archegonial initial. It will undergo all the repeated divisions in the development and result in the formation of this archegonia. So, these are the surrounding cells of the thallus and this is the archegonia. Uh, this is a venter, basal venter, enclosing the female gamete egg cell and a small ventral canal cell and this is a neck long elongated neck having comprising of four cells and these are the cover cells and uh, these two are very important in anthocerols the number of the cover cells or the lid cells are four in number and the next cells are four in number now how the fertilization is uh, happening here once the both the sexual organ that is antheridia and the archegonia when they get matured the fertilization will happen so the plant becomes wet by the oozing of the moisture from the cells of the tissue and also by absorbing the water during the rainy season now these anthrozoids which are released from the antheridia they are attracted towards the archegonium what we call it as chemotactic attraction now, these anthrozoids, they enter into the archegonium through the neck canal. And uh, the uh, one of the anthrozoid, it will fuse with the egg and, and complete the fertilization. So, the fusion of this anthrozoid and the egg, it results in the zygote. And now, this zygote, we told you that zygote is the starting cell for the sporophytic generation. The zygote will uh, increases in size and it completely fills the venter and, uh, and it will result in the formation of the next generation called as the sporophyte. So, this is how the fertilization is happening and resulting in the zygote. Now, the zygote develops into the next generation of the life cycle, what we call it as the sporophyte. Now, so the sporophyte of this anthocerous, it is very unique and it is attached to the gametophyte. It will develop from the uh, zygote. As the zygote is embedded in the venter within the tissue, so there's a 
uh, sporophyte is attached to the gametophyte and unlike marchantia the sporophyte of anthozeros is not completely dependent on gametophyte so we can see that it is partially dependent so whereas in marchantia the gametophyte was completely dependent it was absorbing the food material from the gametophytic tissue. It is completely uh, dependent. But whereas here, uh, this is the due course of evolution of the sporophyte. The sporophyte is partially dependent. It's not completely, but only partially dependent. Now, so this is how the sporophyte is developed. This is a zygote, which is developed in the thallus. So, dicot is undergoing several uh, development and resulting in this long sporophyte. Now, so when I talk about the structure of the sporophyte, the sporophyte of the anthocyros, it is a very long structure. The size of that uh, sporophyte is around uh, 5 to 10 centimeters. It is emerging out of the gametophytic tissue. Now, so it, this is also divided into three regions, foot, seta and the capsule. The starting, uh, the basal region of this sporophyte, we call it as the foot. Now, this is a well-developed cup-like structure, okay, which is enclosed in the gametophytic tissue and uh, helping in absorption of the water from the gametophytic tissue. And uh, when we talk about the sita region, the second region, so this is a cushioned like or cup like foot. This is completely the foot region of the sporophyte. And so the second region, generally the sporophyte is comprising of three parts, foot, sita and the capsule. In anthocyros, the sita is poorly developed. Okay, it is only restricted to one of two layers. I repeat this once again. The sita region in the anthocyros, it is poorly developed. It is not, uh, it is not of many layered. It is restricted only to one of two layers. And the topmost layer of the sita region is under meristematic origin. What does it mean? What is that meristematic origin? That means to say the cells of this uh, sita region is always under the division. It always under the state of division. They keep on dividing and dividing. So that base, uh, so due to that division, the capsule becomes very long. So this is the capsule. So whatever we can observe uh, morphologically, the part of the sporophyte, that is a capsule region. Okay, the entire long part of the sporophyte that is the capsule region, long and elongated. So, the, the growth of that capsule into such long is mainly due to the meristematic activity of the sita region. Now, so now we look into the capsule. So, the capsule, it is going to form the upper part of the sporogonium, that is a sporophyte. It is very long narrow and cylindrical. Now, this sporophyte it is, does not have any distinct seta, just now I told you. And the cells of this uh, seta region, the basal part, it is meristematic. So, just now I told you that. it uh, The cells are in a meristematic origin, keep on dividing. So, therefore, capsule grow, continues to grow. And in this capsule region, we can see a central uh, uh, conducting tissue, we call it as columella. So, as I told you, this is a conducting strand or a conducting tissue helping for uh, transporting of the food and the water from the gametophytic tissue. So, this we uh, apart, uh, the side at the both the sides of this columella, we can see an another region which is going to consist, which we call it as the uh, spore, okay, which consists of the spore sac or we call it as a sporogenous tissue. Now, 
So which are going to consist of we develop into the spores. Now the right. Uh, so you look into this. Right. I'll explain this once again. Now, so the wall of this, uh, uh, what we call it as the um, right. So the wall of this capsule, it is several layered thickness. The outermost layer of this capsule, we call it as epidermal layer. And it is uh, acting as a protective sheet with the development of the cuticle. And uh, they also consist of some small stomata for the exchange of the gases. And the cells of this capsule, there are certain cells of the capsule below the epidermal region, which are enclosing the chloroplast. So due to which they can perform the photosynthesis. So based on this reason, based on this point, uh, the capsule region or the sporophyte, it is having the capacity to prepare the food material. Okay, so that's why we call it as the sporophyte is not completely dependent on the gametophyte. It is partially dependent. It will only absorb the water from the gametophytic tissue. Whereas it can prepare its own food material due to the presence of chloroplast in the epidermal layers of this capsule region. Okay, so based on this point, the anthocerosporophyte, it is partially dependent. It is not completely dependent. Now, so this is the arrangement, uh, how the ooze spore is developing into the sporophyte. So that is not that much necessary. So you can look into this here. This is the structure of the capsule. Uh, the sporophyte. So this is the small uh, microscopic structure of the anthocyros, the thallus, and this is a sporophyte, the developing capsule. So this is the basal part of the sporophyte, what I'm calling it as the foot region, which is enclosed inside the gametophyte. And developing from this uh, and developing from this foot is the capsule. This is the long capsule. And here, this is a single layer of the Sita region, which is showing the meristematic activity and developing into this uh, capsule. And here, this is the central columella conducting strand, helping in conducting the uh, water from this gametophytic tissue. And the outer epidermis, this is outer epidermal layer. Below that epidermal layer, you can see these are the parenchymatous cells, which are going to store the food, uh, prepare the food material by the presence of uh, stomat uh, chloroplast in them. And on the either side of this uh, columella, uh, central columella, this is the sporogenous tissue, which are developing. In. We call them as a sporocytes or the spore mother cells. So, which will develop into the spore tetrads at the time of reproduction. So, right. So, these are the, this is the columella region. Surrounding this is the sporogenous tissue or the sporophyte mother cells. Each spore will develop into the uh, spore tetrad. So, these are the spore tetrads. Okay, the cells of the endothelium, it will divide. Uh, so, this is all the developing, how the uh, ooze spore, that is a zygote, will develop into the uh, this one. Now, when I talk about the life cycle of this anthocyros, so this is the, uh, what we call it as, this is anthocyros adult thallus, which are enclosing these two sexual organs, antheridia and the archegonia. Antheridia is developing into the anthrozoids and uh, this is the archegonia. So developing, these are fusing and results in the formation of the zygote. The zygote will undergo several divisions and develops into the next generation, what we call it as the sporophyte. Now this is the uh, capsule region producing the spores. These are the spores. And these are spores, they further divide and produces adult thallus upon germination. Okay, so the how is the spore here? 
the e2 spore the which are released from the uh, capsule they are surrounded by an outer thicker wall what we call it as exosporium and a an, uh, thinner wall we call it as endosporium so these uh, spores they undergo a period of rest for a few months or few weeks and uh, they will undergo germination by the rupturing of the outer wall and they develops into a juvenile stage or the earlier stage of the plant adult thallus what we call it as protonema so this protonema it becomes green in color by the uh, preparation of the food material or the cells and uh, that protonema will develop into a new adult thallus so you can see here this is how the germination of the spore takes place right so here the alternation of generation so here the anthocyrosis shows heteromorphic alternation of generation that means to say the gametophytic thallus is completely different from the uh, sporophytic uh, thallus gametophyte is developing the sexual organs and the sporophyte it is uh, partially dependent and it is a uh, diploid developing the spores and these spores upon germination they form the haploid gametophyte so this is a life cycle so this is a schematic representation of the anthocyros life cycle yeah so this is about so just i'm stop sharing so this is about the life cycle of anthocyros the second genera of the bryophyte uh, which is there in the degree syllabus uh, any queries here regarding hello hello can you hear me am i audible hello yeah so any queries regarding any questions yeah just you can monica just you can um, type in the chat box you can message me any uh, anything to be explained any questions from your side The screen was not visible earlier. Uh, sphagnum and funeria. Funeria will take up in the next class. That is tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is Sunday. Okay, we'll see. Funeria and polytrichum will uh, we go simultaneously? Okay, we are because funeria and polytrichum. Uh, the characters are more or less similar. So, we'll uh, go together, both the genera, in the next class. Yeah, comparison of Marcantia and Anthocyros. Just now I told you one point is Marcantia thallus. Yeah, uh, Marcantia thallus, it is the lobed dichotomously thallus. When you talk about the thallus, Marcantia is the uh, dichotomously lobed thallus. Whereas anthocyros, it is like rosette. The anther lobes, uh, sorry, the lobes of the thallus are, the lobes of the thallus are arranged one above the other, just like a rose petals. Okay, that is one point. Another point here is the sporophyte is embedded inside the gametophytic tissue in the Marcantia. But whereas in uh, anthocyros, the sporophyte is emerging out of the gametophyte. We can clearly see the sporophyte with our eyes. 
So that is another second important point. Next point is in Marchantia, the sporophyte is completely dependent on the gametophyte for both food and the water. But in Anthocyros, it is partially dependent. The capsule, the sporophyte can prepare its own food material. But it can absorb only the water from the gametophyte. So these are the most important points of comparison between Marchantia and the Anthocyros. Next point is, next important point here is, uh, majority of the anthocyros uh, species are monoecious, but whereas in uh, Marchantia, Marchantia is completely a dioecious species. Male thallus and the female thallus, they both are different from one another. So the most important uh, species of anthocyros, uh, just now I, I showed you, no? I just am start sharing my screen again. It is uh, Anthocyros nepalensis, Anthocyros, uh, just going for the starting slide. I hope you can see the screen. So, right. Himalayansis erectus. These are, these two are more commonly observed in the Himalayan region of the Indian origin. So, still any more queries? I hope, Monica, I have cleared your doubts. Okay. Right. Okay, thank you, uh, Rajita. And uh, so, we'll meet in tomorrow's class for explaining the another genera of the bryophyte. With that, we'll complete the bryophytes. Uh, sir, shall I leave? Sirpati, sir, are you there? Okay, okay, madam. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much.